regardless of what last year held for you, and maybe maybe you're looking back at it thinking, there's a lot of things that I want to forget in 2023 or previous years. There's a lot of things about my past that I really need to get out of my head and get rid of. You might be thinking that today. I want to tell you this morning, friends, you can't change your past, but the great news is God can change your future. And I really love that thought. God can change your future today. We're going to be talking about that a little bit this morning today. I remember when I was a kid, um, my older brother and I, um, it was around Christmas time. And, and uh, uh, those of you that are old enough to remember this, you know, we used to have this thing where everybody would get firecrackers at, at the end of the year. Like it was in November, actually. But remember that? Who remembers that? It was a thing called Guy Fox Night. Now, it was a little bit grotesque, a little bit macabre, but <laughs> we used to go right into it. We'd build this massive big bonfire and everyone would have these firecrackers and so on. You can look up the history of it if you like. But, but uh, I remember my brother and I, older brother, we, we, um, we had this big, um, okay, it was a thrippany bunger, right? Is that how you say it? About that long. It was huge. And we thought, well, you know what? Gunpowder, it only explodes when it's really contained. So if you unwind this thing, if you unwind all the paper off it and leave it sitting there and then you light it, it's just going to burn really quick. So that's what we thought um, without really knowing. So we unwound it all and lit the wick. And I was there like about this far away from it to see what would happen. And guess what? It went off. It really went off. So I've got all my hair singed. Maybe that's why there's no hair left. I don't know. Eyebrows singed. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. But it really went off. And um, so was I ever reminded of that in, in later years? You better believe I was reminded of that quite a few times. You know? And so sometimes uh, we'd like to forget the things of our past, but they keep coming back. They keep, they're kind of sticky. They keep coming back to us. And of course, sometimes it's not that funny, the things that happen in our past. But maybe here today, you know, you've got uh, things you wish you could forget uh, in, in your past. Maybe, maybe you struggle with anger in your life. Or maybe there's been things that you've said things to your loved ones or people around you that you love that you can't take back but you really wish you could. Maybe it's this maddening cycle of recurring sin where you're saying, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't, I did. Maybe you've been pouring yourself into your children and things didn't turn out like you prayed for, like you really wanted them to, to grow up in, in a better way, but it just didn't work out that way. Or maybe you've had expectations for yourself for many years and you know you woke up today and realized that it's just not like I've always expected or believed or hoped that it would be, and, and perhaps there's some grief around, around that. And here's the thing, the past doesn't always stay in the past. And what I want to uh, talk about this morning, um, Steve, without knowing, has already introduced about the Apostle Peter. I'm going to talk about Peter this morning and what happened in his life because there's an amazing story about the Apostle Peter that's really relevant to us today to help us understand how God deals with us in regard to our past. And so, as we already read this morning, the Last Supper, and the disciples are all gathered around, and, and Jesus is just uh, showing them that He's going to go to the cross and die for the sins of the whole world. And uh, he's about to go on trial and later be crucified. Then he says to his disciples, as we already read this morning, some of you will deny me, some of you will desert me. But Peter said, regardless of what anyone does, I will never deny you. I'll never betray you. I'm with you, Jesus. You can count on me. You can trust me. What happened about a day later, the very next day, for those of you that know the story, only a few hours later, let's read it, Luke 24, verse 54, it says this. Arresting Jesus, they marched him off and took him into the house of the chief priest. And Peter followed, but at a safe distance. He didn't want to be too closely identified with what was about to happen here. So in the middle of the courtyard, some people had started a fire. It was cold. And they were sitting around trying to keep warm. One of the serving maids sitting at the fire, noticed him, took a second look and said, hey, this man was with him, with Jesus. Peter denied. He said, woman, I don't even know him. Don't know what you're talking about. 
Short time later, someone else noticed him and said, you're one of them. But Peter denied it. Man, I am not. And the next slide says, about an hour later, someone else spoke up, really adamant. He's got to have been with him, with Jesus. He's got Galilean written all over him. Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. At that very moment, the last word hardly off his lips, a rooster crowed. Just then, the master turned and looked. See, Jesus was being interviewed, interrogated, accused in the, in the house of the high priest. And there was an, uh, you could see through into the windows. And it says, the master turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered what the master had said, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. The rooster tells us that it was very late in the night. The sun was about to come up. They'd been there all night. And it says Peter went out and cried and cried and cried, deeply disappointed in his own actions, his own behavior. I want you to imagine for a moment today that you are Peter. And you've walked with Jesus for three years. You've seen him perform countless miracles. You were there when he fed the 5,000 with a few small loaves of bread and fish. You, you saw the dead get people raised up from the dead. You saw many thousands of sick people get healed when Jesus laid his hands upon them and spoke words of healing and life over them. You've seen people that were uh, distressed with demonic spirits set free and the spirits sent packing when Jesus spoke with words of authority over those things. Uh, you've, you've seen uh, other incredible miracles like uh, a storm on the lake uh, calmed when Jesus spoke to that thing. You've seen amazing things happen. You've been with Jesus uh, for those whole three years. And now the Son of God is standing trial for sins that, something He didn't do. He's about to die on a cross for sins He didn't commit in order to save people just like Peter. And yet you've just denied even knowing Him, not once or twice, but three times. And Jesus turns and looks you in the eye. What are you feeling right now? What are you feeling about now? I reckon you're going to feel pretty guilty. So I can't believe I did that. Why, why did I do that? You're feeling shame. What if the other disciples find out what I just did? And you're feeling regret. I, I wish I could take that back. I wish I could take those words back. And, and this morning, you, you've never heard these words directly from Jesus or seen a look like that. But, but in the lives of others, you probably have. What about... You know, someone, a loved one that we let down, and you've seen that look in, in their eyes. Or someone at work that you talked about, and, it, and it, they found out, and it, and it came back to you. And what about someone that we knew, maybe at school, you, you went to school with, and, and you didn't support them when you really needed to. You didn't stand up for them. That, that's how our past keeps coming back to haunt us. And so it's true. For many of us here, probably all of us here in certain ways, our past comes back to haunt us. And we've got to be able to deal with that. Because here's the thing. If I can't get rid of my past, it's very hard to go on into the future unless I can deal with my past. So what happens is that our enemy, the devil, reminds us of our past. He keeps on reminding us and saying things like, you're unforgivable. The things that you did were just so bad and, and the people you offended and affected, there were so many of them that you could never be forgiven. How could God ever forgive you for the things that you did? Or you are unlovable. If people really knew, if the people sitting next to you right now really knew what you were like, they wouldn't be able to love you anymore. And the devil says things like, you are useless. What if this happens again? God could never use a person like me because of what I've done. It's interesting how that when God speaks to you, when the Holy Spirit speaks into your life, He always speaks in the second person. And He says things like, I love you, my child. I love you and I'm, I'm forgiving you. I'm pouring out my grace and my forgiveness towards you. But when the devil speaks to you, he always comes in the first person and says things like, I'm useless or I'm unworthy or I'm... For so that you think it's yourself. The devil speaks into your heart in the first person to make you think it's yourself thinking those things. But it's not. 
It's that little insidious voice on your shoulder, the enemy reminding you of your past all the time. And God says, I've come to set you free from your past. I've come to set you free you can, so you can let go of those things and move on into an amazing future. The good news is Jesus doesn't leave us holding on to our past. He comes to us right there when we need it the most. And how do we know that? Because that's exactly what he did with Peter. We're going to look at that just for a few moments. And I have got a clock up the back there, Steve, by the way. It's counting down. <laughs> but that's okay because I'm doing okay. So after Peter denied Jesus, he denied his Lord. And he walked away from the calling that he had in God. He went back fishing and got some of the other disciples with him. They went back fishing and that night they caught nothing, it tells us. And so we're going to read in a moment from John chapter 21 about this. But then what happened is Jesus came to them. Jesus didn't wait for Peter to come back to him. Jesus went to Peter. It says Jesus, and Jesus was standing on the beach. They weren't very far off the shore. And Jesus called out to them and said, have you caught anything? No, we caught nothing all night. Surprise, surprise. And so Jesus says, throw the net on the other side of the boat. And all of a sudden, there were so many fish there, they couldn't bring them in. They couldn't even haul the catch of fish. So Jesus said, you know, come, come in. And, um, and so when Peter realized that it was Jesus, he jumped into the water and got back to the shore as quickly as he could. And here he is face to face with the one that he has just betrayed, denied, and offended three times. You can imagine how awkward that might have been. And Jesus has breakfast cooking for them right there on the beach. And this is probably like the most awkward breakfast anyone has ever had in their lifetime. <laughs> and in fact, the Bible tells us there is no record of any conversation. There is no record that they had any conversation because it says after breakfast, Jesus spoke to them. So they're just sitting there. And they don't know what's really going on. But um, Simon, Jesus says to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me? So he breaks out Peter's full name. He's using his full name. Now, you know what it's like when your mother or your father or someone used your full name. What does that mean? It usually means you're in trouble, right? Jesus didn't say, hey, Peter, mate, great to see you. Or his, his real name was Simon. Peter was the nickname that Jesus had given him. He didn't use any of those names. He said, Simon, son of John, his full name. And Peter's thinking, guess what? I'm about to cop it. I'm really going to get it now. You know, I'm going to hear, are you feeling bad about this, mate? Do you realize what you've done? Do you know who I am? Do you know what you've just done? Here's, here's what you need to do to try and claw back your position here. You know, Jesus, that's what Peter's thinking. He's thinking, I'm really in for it right now. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm really going to get it. But Jesus simply says, Simon, do you love me? It's not what you would expect in view of Peter's recent past. Let's read John 21 verse 15. After breakfast, Jesus says, after breakfast, Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, Son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Master. He seriously got his tail between his legs. You know, you know, you, you know, you know I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Then he asked him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Master. You know I love you. Jesus said, shepherd my sheep. Then he said it a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was upset that he asked for the third time, do you love me? So he answered, Master, you know everything there is to know. You've got to know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. It's going to look at this very briefly, what was happening right here in this moment. Number one, Jesus asked him three times, as you, as you could you see there. He asked him three times. Now it's interesting because we're just a few days earlier, Peter hadn't denied Jesus once or twice, but three times he denied Jesus. And so three times 
Jesus is coming back to ask him that question, do you love me? How caring it is, how kind it is of Jesus to offend Peter. Peter was upset. Peter was upset and he was hurt by Jesus asking him three times. Now, Jesus could have ignored what had happened in the past. He could have said, hey, let's just not worry about all that. Let's just sweep that under the carpet. Let's act like it didn't happen. But I want, to, I want you to know this morning, friends, that God is very interested in dealing with the things that are in our life that will become a blockage to us in the future. And so what Jesus was doing right here is he's drilling down to make sure that this wound and this brokenness and this shameful act of Peter is dealt with right there in that moment. Because God... Jesus cared about Peter, and God cares about each one of us today. He cares enough to go right in to the deepest parts of our life and deal with st stuff in our heart. He's more concerned with lasting healing in our life than our short-term feelings. And Jesus understood the, wo the wounds that we have in life have got to be cleaned out so they can be properly healed. Here's the thing about Letting go of your past. You've got to be able to close the door on your, on, our, on, our, on your past. You've got to be able to accept that God's grace is bigger and God's grace is more powerful than our sin and our failure and our weakness. Let's read this 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. You know this verse uh, if you've been a Christian for any length of time. But if we own up to our sins, God shows that He's faithful and just by forgiving us of our sins and purifying us from the pollution of all the bad things we have done. You know, God is faithful to cleanse us and deal with and get rid of the sin and the shame and the brokenness and the, and the horrible things in our past. That's what He wants to do. That's what He's come to do to deal with those things, to get rid of those things in our past. And so Jesus doesn't come to us and say, hey, this is what you've got to do to make penance, to pay penance. This is what you've got to do, 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 do. This is what you've got to go and lie on a bed of nails for three days. You've got to, I want you to go and feel guilty for, you know, six months so that you can get rid of this sin and shame in your life. I want you to come and beg me. What he says is, if you're faithful and just to own up to your sin, he says, I'll cleanse that, I'll deal with it, I'll get rid of it and do away with it. Friends, this morning, your standing with God is, is determined by your relationship with Him, not the rules that you have broken or the rules that we've broken, the rules that I've broken before Him today. And it's interesting that Peter said to Jesus, Master, you know everything. You know everything there is to know. You know all about me. And it's true. Jesus knows everything about us. And so when we, we think that, you know, we've got, to, we've got to go through this process, this painful process to get rid of our sin and our shame, we're not acknowledging that the, the work of the cross and the power of Jesus' death on the cross is sufficient to cleanse and cover us for our sins. He already knows everything about your life. God already knows everything about you and He still extends His love and His grace towards you today. That's the amazing thing about the grace of God and I love that. When we hold on to our past, what we're saying is the power of my past is stronger than the power of the cross and it's not. It's not. Whatever's in your past, friends, the blood of Jesus can cleanse that and do away with that today. What I did, what I'm saying is what I did is stronger than what Jesus did for me. And it's not true. What Jesus did for you is far more powerful and stronger than that. So what is Jesus' response to Peter's betrayal? What did Jesus do in light of Peter's past and his betrayal? He forgave and he restored and he cleansed him. That's what God does. That's what he seeks to do for us today. And so friends, you, you are not what... You've done, you are who God says you are. You're who God says you are. Forgiven, you're his child. You're valuable, you're precious in his sight. You're wonderful. That's a great word, precious. You're precious in God's sight. You're precious in God's sight. And every one of us here are precious in God's sight today because he loves you today and he extends his hand of grace towards you today. So powerful.
So then we need to step into our future. And uh, I, I just love this thought that God saves you from your past so that you can step into your future. So you can step into your future. When Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep, when he said, feed my lambs, shepherd my sheep, and feed my sheep, what's he doing? What's Jesus doing? And this is the really the crux of this message this morning. I'll tell you what Peter's doing. He is reaffirming Peter's calling. He is saying, Peter, you stuffed up, but guess what? I haven't changed my mind. I still want you to be an apostle. I still want you to lead this bunch of ragtag followers I've got. I still want you to lead these people. Jesus wasn't punishing him. Jesus was saying, Peter, I'm still, I'm still calling you the same as I called you three years ago. I said, leave your nets. Leave that fishing boat and come and follow me. And he's saying, that calling is still there. I'm not asking you to walk away from it. I'm reaffirming it today. And I believe that's what God is doing today in some hearts here. There's reaffirming that call. Regardless of what the past has held for you, regardless of what has transpired over the last years, God's call is being reaffirmed in your heart today. And Peter's call is grounded in his love for Christ, not his own perfect performance. I love that. You know, um, Jesus wasn't waiting for people to do everything right, to tick all the boxes before he said, yeah, okay, you can do, you can do the job that I've got for you. It's like, you know, in, in, the, in the business world today, we have these KPIs. And when you've got to go for a, an interview, I've, I've been, a few, three, been through a few of these. We've got interviews and, and you've got to tick all the boxes. And if you're going to go on to the next level, you have to tick the box. I'm sure there's a number of you here that have, that have been in this situation before. If, you've got, if you meet all the KPIs, you can go to the next level. Key performance indicators. You can go up to the next level in your workplace. I want to tell you, Jesus said, I'm extending my love and my grace towards you. And my call is in your life. It's not dependent upon your perfect performance, but upon the fact that I'm with you. I've come to fill you. I've come to strengthen you and empower you and lead you into your future. So the... Jesus' call to Peter was, since you love me, now I want you to love my people. So he's saying, do you love me? Do you love me? Of course, you know that I love you. Now I want you to love my people. Maybe that's a call that God is putting on someone's heart right now. I want you to love my people. Our qualification to be used by God is not just having a perfect past, but it's having the presence of God in your life and the knowledge of God, the knowledge of His love for you and your love for Him in your heart. So God is in the business. I love this thought. God is in the business of using imperfect people to transform and to impact His world. That's why I'm here, folks. <laughs> and that's why you're here. Imperfect people that can impact His world. And so... Friends, there's, there's hope for every one of us. There's hope for me and there's hope for you today. Not because you've got everything, all your ducks lined up in a row, but because Jesus said, I'm, I'm showing you my grace. I'm showing you my love for you and my power in your life poured out upon your heart. Now, the problem is what, what happened, the problem that we have with this is it's like uh, a photo on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, a group photo. Imagine this for yourself. We're coming to a close here. Imagine you're in a group photo and there's, let's say there's eight people or half a dozen people and um, you're looking at the photo. You see it up there on the screen. Yeah, okay. What determines if it's a good photo or not? How you look. You're in a group photo. You're looking at, what are you looking at? Are you looking at everyone else? You're looking at yourself. And if it's the right if you've got the right kind of smile, if you've got the right look, it's a great photo. And if you're not look, if you're not great, it doesn't matter what everyone else looks like. If they're perfect, it's not a good photo, right? And so, very, so often we we think that 
the, the story of our life is all about us, but it's actually not. Because in Peter's, this story we've read this morning and looked at, it wasn't really a story about Peter's life and about his failure. It was a story about Jesus and what he had done in Peter's life. And I, I want us to get a hold of that this morning, friends. Uh, we, we think about this and we think it's a story about Peter until we realize it's a story about Jesus. Not about Peter's past, what he's done, but about the cross and what Jesus has done for our life. And so when I look at my life, I don't, I don't want to look back at all my failures of the past. What I want to look at is God's faithfulness, God's faithfulness to me and God's faithfulness to you. So not how bad I was, but how good God is. That's what it's about, friends. The story of your life needs to be not about how bad you were, but about how good God is in your life and His faithfulness toward you. So ultimately, your story can be that too as well and, and should be about that. Not about your failure, but a story about God's victory and God's faithfulness and God's goodness in your life. And I, as we bring this to a close, I wonder can our creative team come back up on the stage here. But, but uh, I, I want to encourage you this morning, friends. You don't need to be held captive by your past. Because God says, I've come to set you free from your past. I've come to set you free and, and to write a new story, to help you write a new story into the future, which is not even about you. It's about what God is doing in your life, has done, is doing right now, and will do into the future what God is doing in your life, what Jesus is doing in your life in the future. So if you're here today and maybe you've been holding on to the past, Maybe some feelings of, of guilt and, and shame and regret, those, those things from the past. And Jesus is saying, I've come to restore. I've come to forgive. I've come to heal. You want to close your eyes just for a moment? Because I want us to think about this just as we bring this to a close.